Well, hello and welcome back to the third part here at the Cisco Learning Network on our series on IPv6. My name is Anthony Sequera, and in this last part, we're going to go ahead and examine the technological requirements for IPv6. I mean, I'm sure you're wondering, okay, are we ready for this thing? And how are we going to transition to this new world of an IPv6 environment? Well, first off, you'll be happy to know that when your beloved routing protocols need to become involved, they're ready to go. Yeah, both exterior gateway protocols and interior gateway protocols are ready and raring to go for an IPv6 world. From an EGP perspective, we have multi-protocol extensions for border gateway protocol that are going to allow BGP to easily carry our IPv6 prefix information. From an interior gateway perspective, we have OSPF version 3 to carry the IPv6 prefix information inside our domain. We have EIGRP for version 6. We even have a next generation RIP. Can you believe it? The routing information protocol lives on for an IPv6 world. Now, all you would have to do on a Cisco router to tell it that it's ready to run v6 routing protocols is you use the command ipv6 unicast hyphen routing in global configuration mode. And now your device is ready to run the particular IGPs and BGP that it would run if indeed your router code supported that. Remember, to make sure that your router supports all of these various IPv6 routing protocols, you would use the feature navigator at Cisco's website. So, routing protocols ready and raring to go for a v6 world. Now, one of those that we mentioned is RIP Next Generation, and I chuckle saying it because it was such a surprise for me when I learned that RIP would live on in an IPv6 world. You figured that it would be a great opportunity to kill it off. But no, it lives on. And if you look at its features, you realize something pretty neat. If you've mastered RIP from a CCNA perspective, and I expect that you would have, it has more similarities in a v6 world than differences. Yeah, it has a 15 hop limitation. It does split horizon. It does poison reverse. It does a hop count for a metric. And it has, like I said, a lot more similarities than it would have differences. And you're going to find this for all of your routing protocols. OSPF version 3 has many, many more similarities to OSPF version 2 that runs in the IPv4 environment than it does differences. So, awesome news for those of us that have mastered these routing protocols and we're ready to transition into an IPv6 world. Speaking of transitioning into an IPv6 world, how can we do that easily? Well, the answer really comes through something called dual stack. Now, dual stack is just a fancy way of saying on a network device, we can run multiple protocols simultaneously. Watch, I can go in on this interface and say, all right, you're going to run IPv4 and there's your address. <laughs> Except you don't say IPv4 address. That's hilarious that I did that. You just say IP address. Then you can go in and you can say, all right, guess what? You're also going to run a uh, V6 protocol. You're going to run the IPv6 suite of protocols. So we can go in and we can give that address. And now these protocol stacks live side by side. This is what we call dual stack. 
And this is no big revolutionary concept. When I started in networking, it was Microsoft Technologies running IP sitting next to Novell Netware running IPX SPX on your devices. But think about this. If your device can run IPv4 and IPv6 simultaneously in this dual stack manner that we speak of, doesn't this mean that we could transition between the two protocols utilizing tunneling? And that's exactly what we have. Thanks to dual stack, we get a wide variety of tunneling mechanisms that we can use. So if we have one office over here like headquarters and we totally made it IPv6 only, what a wonderful idea. And then over here we have a branch office and sure enough, it's V6 only taking great advantage of all of those wonderful features. Well then sure enough, we can on these dual stack routers here that are going to be at the edge of this V4 only network, we can tunnel the V6 traffic. Such a great concept that allows these technologies to run seamlessly against each other. Here you can see a better look at it. Here we can see that we have a V6 over IPv4 packet. There's V6 inside the V4 outer shell for transmission over a V4 only network. So, great news, we don't have to shut down the internet as we deploy IPv6. In fact, in you and I's lifetime, we'll continue to see V4. I really think that in our lifetime, we'll still be working with V4. Sure, the pockets of V4 might get smaller and smaller, but V4 is going to be with us for a very, very long time as IPv6 and IPv4 can live seamlessly together. Well, thank you so much for joining us for this third part of our three-part series on IPv6, Compliments of the Cisco Learning Network.